Well, there are several challenges with transfusion medicine. Certainly, we want to avoid transfusion if we can. There are risks with infection, transmitting viral diseases including, or bacterial diseases. In the addition, there's other complications using blood, transfusion-related uh, acute lung injury, immunosuppression from using blood in uh, immunocompromised patients. Certainly in cancer surgery, the risk of cancer recurrence has been shown to be increased in the presence of blood transfusion. You're giving essentially a transplant to the patient. Blood is a tissue, and you're transplanting a foreign tissue into the patient. Uh, there's a lot of risks that are low-level risks that we don't even think about. Uh, having the stored blood set on the shelf for a while, the hemoglobin's not going to function that well. The heart is a crucial organ, so we're mainly operating on, on sick hearts already. When patients are challenged again with the, um, the challenge of a reaction to a blood transfusion or blood products, um, there is literature suggesting that the, its impact on the heart muscle itself could be more detrimental than we actually realize. Uh, patients developing an inflammatory reaction uh, that can actually uh, lead to many problems after surgery. They found that uh, in clinical studies that patients that get blood, they have the mortality up to a year following their exposure to blood. There's a lot of cost hidden behind the transfusion. Blood products are expensive. That is, for a hospital, a hard cost. Then we have the additional costs of type and cross, type and screen, antibody checks, tubing, nursing time. All of those have to go in as incremental costs. The reason that people tend to use blood as a default rather than look for alternatives is it's an easy trigger to pull. Uh, just give the patient a couple of units or, well, they're bleeding a little bit, uh, they probably need platelets. But they're not doing it with any real information before they do it. Uh, it's the proverbial shotgun technique, and they're not really getting the data that they need, nor necessarily the alternatives, before they go ahead and just use blood or blood products. And really, the, the benefit to transfusion in many cases has been questioned. The Society for the Advancement of Blood Management is a professional organization made of multi-professionals and it's multidisciplinary with a charter to educate all in healthcare on issues related to patient blood management. SABIN promotes patient blood management which is making best use of a patient's own blood so that they can avoid the risks associated with donor blood. Global Blood Resource is a company that's built a methodology and a product that is designed to address the patient blood management problem. The Hemobag is an FDA approved device that is used to save and concentrate a patient's own blood and reintroduce to that patient at the end of a surgical procedure taken from the heart-lung machine to provide the outcomes that we're trying to achieve. The thing that's unique about the Hemobag is it allows for whole blood concentration, so we're not just focusing on one specific blood cell, which is what most of the other vendors have done. By using the hemobag, we're able to ultrafiltrate blood at the end of a case and give back all of the blood components that uh, we would normally give to a patient with a whole blood transfusion. This is a significant saving to the patient. It's also much safer because it's the patient's own blood rather than someone else's blood. And we're not throwing away the components that we routinely did using a cell saver technique. Uh, with the hemo bag, it's quick and easy. We set it up and basically use it on every case that we do here. It's in three easy steps. We fill the bag, we concentrate it. At the end of the concentration, which takes about eight to 10 minutes, we t disconnect the bag from the heart-lung machine and we give it to anesthesia and anesthesia reinfuses it within eight to 10 minutes. That simple really is an adjunct to what you may already have established in the operating room. Use of hemobag is sort of a no-brainer for us. The less allogeneic blood we use, 
the quicker you will recover, the less infections you will get, and the shorter time you will spend in the hospital. We've seen a very encouraging trend towards fewer complications in the patient's post-operative course. In 95% of our cases at this institution, we don't give blood products. So we've essentially saved this hospital hundreds of thousands of dollars by utilizing the hemobag. If we're able to use the hemobag in a cardiac surgery and have the complete kit for less than it would cost me to buy one unit of blood, that was well worth the, ex the expense. And in turn, the results paid us back multiple times over. I think Sabaman and GBR complement each other well because they're both trying to do the same thing, which is good patient care, good patient safety, and providing a technique which will allow us to get the best results. Well, SABM is an international institution and society that's helping our whole medical community and also the, the public. Their whole mission tied to minimizing blood transfusions uh, and avoiding, I, can, I like to use the term, unnecessary transfusions by supporting and helping us better understand some of the technology that's available out there. For example, the hemobag and other techniques available. It's, uh, it goes hand in hand with their mission as well as our own daily operations for surgery. The Society for the Advancement of Blood Management is clearly the world leader in patient blood management. Global Blood Resources recognizes that leadership in providing hospitals and clinicians the best guidelines possible for patient blood management. This is a natural fit for Global Blood Resources in their partnership with the Society.